Hey guys, Melissa here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I wrap these cute little faceted peridot stones into little drop earrings. It's a nice, clean, simple design. So if you want to see how I wire wrap small faceted stones, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. All right, so let's get started. I have two little heart-shaped peridot here. They measure, I'll measure them out for you. But the way I wrap these, I've gone down to like three millimeters and you can use this technique for any size you'd like. Today I'm making a pair of earrings, but you can also make a pendant as well. And since it is almost fall where I'm at right now, I'm gonna use gold fill. This is gold fill wire. Gold fill is really nice to work with. It's a little on the pricey side compared to sterling silver and especially copper. You can use whatever metal choice you desire. This is 24 gauge square. I also grabbed some 22 gauge half round wire here. This is also gold fill. So half round wire, it's round on one side and flat on the other side. Just so you know, all the tools and materials I have listed down in the description. If I'm able to provide a link, I will. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a ruler. And for these little stones, I usually grab about three inches of wire. And for each stone, I use three lengths for a really simple cage design. Okay, that's one. I try to pull them out straight before I cut them. It's really easy to do with the gold fill. Okay, that's for one. Need three more. Okay, I have two sets of three wires, one for each stone. I like to tape mine together, so I have four pieces of tape here. These are square wires, so you gotta get them nice and snug next to each other. I use flat nose pliers for this. It helps out to get them flush next to each other and straight at the same time. Sometimes it's a little tricky with the smaller wire. So there, there's, see how the flash? They're nice and flush. I'm gonna tape it. That side is done, so then I just follow it down, kind of smooth them out. Sometimes they just need a little wiggle. Go down to the other side. When you know they're not cockeyed or twisted and tape the other side do the same with the other bundle Next, I'm going to put my center bindings on. I think I'll cut off like four or five inches so I don't have to work with this whole bundle. So then on the end here, I just put a little hook, like a cockeyed hook, grab a bundle, smoosh, 
that hook down. which is longer than my bundle. Bring your long end over the top, turn it around. I'm gonna have to make this guy shorter. It's too long. Come in here with my flesh cutters, cut it a little shorter. And I wrap it around, usually for these small stones. I'll do three bindings. And that's plenty for a little guy like that. Cut it off and leave a tail. So you can push that over. And it goes about at least halfway over the bundle. All right, you can use your ruler to see if you got it in the center. Looks like I got to push mine over just a little bit. There. All right, there's one. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention before, when you're using half round wire, your flat side is towards your wire bundle. So when you make your hook, the round side is towards the outside. Do a little off center, little cockeyed hook there. Hook it onto your wire bundle. This one, of course, is extending past my bundle again, my three wires. I'll need to snip that. Let me do that now. Just kind of lift it up. Trim that and press it down. Go through and make your three bindings. Trim that one off, press it down. Now see how this one's kind of angled? If yours are on an angle, you can come through with the points of your pliers and go on opposite corners and kind of give a gentle squeeze. And that should straighten them right up. We got our two bundles. Make sure this one's centered. That's pretty good. Next, we start shaping. I am working with hearts here, so I'm going to put a little bit of a sharp angle in mine. If you are using an oval tiny stone, then you can kind of shape your wires around something round like that but mine are pointy, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a point in my wires. Make sure your ends are on the inside and your three bindings are on the outside. Try to get that middle binding right in the center. That looks like a good fit. The other one, make sure your bindings are on the outside and your ends are on the inside. That 
looks pretty good too. And at this point, I'm going to take my tape off. My wires are held together nicely. And we're going to need to bend them out, so we're going to need to free up our ends. Be careful taking your tape off so you don't misshape in anything. These wires are pretty delicate, more so since mine are gold fill, but even sterling and copper will get all misshapen if you're not careful. Next, we're going to work on our back wires. When you're using faceted stones, the table is flat, then you got a little bevel on the sides, and then the back, which is called a culet, sticks out and is usually comes to a point. So you want your wire cage to protect that. You don't want that sticking out. So what I do is uh, determine which side you want the back. See how you can see that end piece there? I'm going to turn that, put that in the back. All right. And you're going to take your back wire. Try to slip your flat nose down to the bindings there. And bend them backward. Or I should say, bend them up. So there's your V. And then you're going to bend them up at like a 45 degree angle. And then your front wires, going to gently pull them forward as well, or up, or just kind of away from the middle wire. So your back wires that you brought up, you're going to go a few millimeters up from your bindings and bend them back. up again so they meet the other wires. That may be too much of a bend, but we'll find out since this is a pretty shallow stone. probably need to shorten those up a little bit. We can start to begin shaping our wires so they are closer and more touching each other more. So eventually we're going to have this bundle of three and this bundle of three all converging and laying nicely together. So I'm kind of working on that now. So you can see how these three wires and these three wires are behaving themselves. Come through, see how your bindings look. They're kind of crooked. Come through and even those up. Make sure everything's straight and even. So I'm going to put my tape back on once I get my squares straight and cooperating next to each other. So I'm going to put a set of bindings on each one of these and that'll help lock our stones in place. So just like I did before, I'm going to put a little hook, offset hook, put the hook towards the center of the design. Probably do two bindings. Pull them apart so they're not getting in your way. So let's go two times around. Make sure they're snug. There's one. Do the same to the other side.
get them even. Now we got to figure out where we want our bindings. Take your tape off. Make sure you have some room for your stone to fit in, in the front. You might have to pull them back out again. I found this easy to get the stone in. Just put the stone in face down and then come over the top of it. And snap it in. That puts it right where you need it. Squeeze your wires together. You can squeeze your top wires in a little bit, just just slightly. You don't need too much. And determine now how much of a dangle you want and bring your bindings down. Yeah, I like them about there. That looks nice. Next, you get to bind all six wires together. They should be all sitting next to each other. Three and three. And then take your half round wire, put a little hook in it. Make sure everybody's straight. Put that guy in the back right above one of your bindings. And start wrapping it around. Making sure all of your square wires stay straight. Three times around is good. To keep these bindings nice and tight, I kind of press them down, grab the very back wires, and bend them out to lock my bindings in place. I can figure out which ones they are. Okay, bring these out. You can bring the front ones out too. Kind of keep everybody locked. And keep those middle ones facing upward. So that's one earring. I'll stop there and I'll do the other one real quick. Try to make them look as similar as possible. So this side, I'll try to breeze through it. Bring these down a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. That looks good.
Your stone should be pretty much locked in place. If not, you can go ahead and tighten things up, adjust things. Adjust your wires so your stone is nice and tight. Okay, so I'm going to finish off these earrings nice and clean and simple. If you have your own swirling design that you want to do with these extra wires, you go ahead and do what you want. I'll show you how to do a simple tie off. I grabbed, this looks like a 14 gauge piece of scrap wire, and I'm going to use that to make the loop to accommodate a jump ring so you can put these on ear wires. But first, let's take care of these wires. So I got my half round sticking out the side here. I'm going to go ahead and snip that short. Press it down as tight as I can. Let's see, these front wires, I'm going to go ahead and cross them really tight. And bring them towards the back really snug. Cross them in the back as well. Make sure they're nice and snug and tight and trim them off as well. Smush those down. The back wires bring them straight down. Nice sharp angle here. Straight down the back. You can press them tight and they're going to cover up the ends. Everything's going to cover up your half round and the ends from the top. You're going to kind of snip them short back here. Like that. That should keep everything nice and tight. Now all you have left is your middle wires. Bring them forward. You're going to make a loop. You can use whatever you got as a mandrel. I'm just going to use this scrap wire here. can also use a pair of round nose pliers, but they taper, so I'm going to go back and forth. So I'm going to bring one wire up the one side and then the other wire up the other side. Snug them up tight. Make sure everything's nice and tight and even. Now you have that nice tiny loop there. I'm going to come through and snip them short. Okay, so that's one. Do the same with this one.
make sure that your loop isn't sticking up farther than your other earring too. That's another thing you gotta make sure they match. They don't match. pendants are easier because you don't have to match them up to anything. This one just looks tighter. Alright, that's better. That's better. And there we are. Okay, I found some jump rings that I made myself that are gold filled. I like them nice and thick like this. These are either 18 gauge or 16 gauge. Not quite sure. Pretty sure these are 16 gauge. If you're not sure how to make your own jump rings, I'll link a video above. It's really easy. Let's see how these look. I kind of like chunky jump rings with my earrings, but I don't want them to be too overpowering. That's not too bad. At least it's not wider than my earring. That wouldn't be good. But now all we need is ear wires. All right, so I couldn't find ear wires pre-made. See, I had these, but they're really brassy compared to my earrings here. So I, I thought they kind of looked cheesy. So I made my own ear wires out of gold fill wire, 20 gauge. I'll go ahead and link a video up above how I make my ear wires. But for now, I'm just gonna put them on here. There we have it all finished. So what do you guys think? Do you think you'll give these earrings a try? Do you have any small faceted stones you need to wrap? I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up. My question of the week is, what is your favorite season? Let me know in the comments. Fall is quickly approaching in the next week. These earrings would make a pretty addition to anybody's fall jewelry. Fall tends to be my favorite season, but anyway, that's it for me. Like I said, hit the like button if you like this tutorial. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell to be notified when I put out a new video. I make new videos each week. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.